So let's suppose I take the following object, a camera, and I allow my camera to free fall. So I take it and I let go. Now as soon as I let go of the camera, it begins to free fall. It accelerates downward due to gravity. And according to the second law of motion, because my object begin, begins accelerating, a net force must be acting on my object. And because my object is moving downward, that means my net force is acting downward along my y-axis. And in fact, any free-falling object that is falling at the surface or close to the surface of the Earth, and as long as we neglect air resistance, the net force on that object can be found by using our equation from the second law of motion. So the net force acting along the y-axis on our object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. And since the only force acting on that object is the force due to gravity, we replace our A with G, where G is 9.80 meters per second squared at the surface of the Earth. Now, this force equals mg is known as the weight of our object. So what happens when the object reaches the surface of the earth, our ground? Well now our object is stationary. So when the object is on the ground it is at rest and according to the first law of motion the net force along the y-axis along the vertical axis is zero our object is no longer accelerating and that means we now have a second force that must be acting on our object and which must point in the opposite direction of the force due to gravity, our weight. So our weight is offset by a force called the normal force. This is the force that the ground exerts on our ball. So we have two ob or two forces acting on our object. We have the normal force which points upward and we have the force due to gravity which points in the opposite direction downward. Now, what exactly is the net force along the y-axis? Well, we said that it's zero. So the net force along the y-axis is equal to zero. So we basically sum up these forces and we equate it to zero. Now we choose the upward direction along the y-axis to be positive. So our normal force is positive and our gravitational force, our weight of the object is negative. So the normal force minus the gravitational force is equal to zero. If we bring the gravitational force to this side, we see that the normal force is exactly equal to our gravitational force, or at least the magnitude of it is. Now, note a very important uh, point. These two forces, the normal force and the weight, are not action-reaction forces spoken of in the third law of motion. Those action-reaction forces are acting on two different objects, but these two forces are acting on the same exact object, namely our ball. So, let's for example take our normal force. So, we said that our ground creates a force on the ball, our object number one. And according to the third law of motion, the ball creates a force on our ground object number two that points in the downward direction, in the opposite direction. And these two forces are the action-reaction forces spoken of in Newton's third law of motion. Note that they're not the same exact forces spoken of in this example. These two forces are acting on the same exact object while these two action-reaction forces are acting on different objects. One is acting on the ball, the second one is acting on the ground. So once again, according to the third law, the action-reaction forces are the force acting on the ground due to the ball and the force acting on the ball due to the ground. These are the two action-reaction forces, not the same forces spoken of here. So the normal force 
and our weight, our force due to gravity, are not action-reaction forces. So let's do an example. A box resting on a horizontal table, let's say the horizontal table is the x-axis, has a mass of 100 kilograms. Find the normal force as well as our weight. Well, since our object is assumed to be stationary, let's draw our diagram. So our object is stationary, and that means our net force acting on the object along the y-axis is zero because our object is not moving along the vertical direction. So our net force along the y-axis is equal to zero newtons. Now let's add up the sum of these two forces. Let's choose upward to be positive, downward to be negative. So the normal force, which is positive because it points upward, minus the force due to gravity, our weight of the object. So we can rearrange our equation, bring this force to this side, and we get the normal force of our object, which is perpendicular to our ground, is equal to our weight of the object, the force due to gravity, which is equal to mass times g as we got in part a. So our mass is 100 kilograms, our g is 9.80 meters per second squared, and so that means our force is 980 newtons. So this is both the normal force as well as the weight of our object. 